The investigation into the fatal crash involving former Titans kicker Rob Baronis Saturday night has been shrouded by reports of road rage and a jumbled timeline of the events leading up to the crash. And new at 6 tonight, News Channel 5's Jason Lamb has been tracking the very latest developments in the investigation. He's at our smart screen. Rob Baronis was said to be speeding the night of the crash on Battery Lane. Well, today I contacted Metro Police who said they have no record of any previous speeding tickets for Baronis. Now let me show you the timeline of what we know right now about what happened Saturday night. The first call that something was wrong was at about 1040 p.m. when some Belmont students were traveling north along Franklin Pike. They reported Baronis was trying to run them off the road. The students tried to get away. They turned left onto South Douglas Avenue and then they turned right onto 10th Avenue South. We just turned onto 10th Avenue. We're heading towards Westwood. Okay. And it's a white SUV. He's still behind us. Uh, a white SUV, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, we're going to go. What, what street was that? <laughs> we're on Ackland right now. We turned to right on Ackland. That was at 1048. Police say between then and 1102, Baronis left the 10th and Ackland area and got back on to Franklin Pike, starting to head south, getting into an argument with a driver in another car along Battery Lane. My husband got out of the car because he came beside us and he gave us this crazy look. My husband's like, what do you want? Yeah. And he just fell off past us and he followed us down this road. And then we just pulled out of this way. And then we saw all the smoke and everything. Yeah. And we pulled over and just wondering if it's him. Okay. But he's dangerous. The police need to know there's something wrong with yeah. him. That smoke they saw along Battery Lane was Baronis's crashed vehicle around 11 o'clock. Several other 911 calls came in at the time reporting the crash. Now at 1140, that's 40 minutes after the crash and less than a mile from the crash site, Baronis's wife, Rachel Bradshaw, called 911 to report her husband missing. When was the last time you talked to him? Uh, two hours ago. He came home and <clears throat> we were watching a movie and then he just left. And that was it. He was, he just left. His, his, he has a white Denali and he just drove away and we haven't seen him since. Okay. But there's a discrepancy between that 911 call and the police report filed a couple hours later. In the report, Bradshaw said it was 1030 that night when Baronis told her good night and left the room. She said she assumed she was going to bed, that he did not just get up and leave. Now, police have speculated that emotions surrounding the situation caused the confusion about what happened, but there are still a lot of questions to sort out about what happened and when. Jason Lamb, News Channel 5 HD.